Welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here, whether in person or worshiping online. Our uh, liturgist for today, uh, Victor McGough, is uh, unfortunately uh, sick, so I'm uh, pinch hitting. We welcome you all. The question of the day is, what is something new that you have learned about a friend or family member? Thank you, Latari. Please join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. God of all peoples, you are the true light. You show us the way, the truth, and the life. You love us even when we are disobedient. Your Holy Spirit is what keeps us going. We rejoice that you are living in the heart of our life. We praise you for being the source of all that gives us hope. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn.
Thank you so much, Kurt and LaTerry, for helping us worship. Our affirmation of faith. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We thank you for your continuing support of Trinity through your tithes and offerings. And now let us pray. God of transformation, we come together as those who have met you on the mountaintop. We have each had our holy encounters with you. And in those aha moments, we have wanted to stay on the mountain and retreat from the world. We know that this is our longing, not yours. So as we offer our gifts this morning in response to your blessings in our life, remind us that our mission begins as we leave this place and help us hold our memories of those mountaintop encounters with you in our hearts. We pray boldly in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Trinity. You know, life gives us lots of challenges along the way, and Lord knows we've had our share of challenges this last year. But with, as Christians, with God's love and with Jesus Christ by our side, it still truly is a wonderful world. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that who, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.
you may be seated. Uh, it's a wonderful new surprise to me to continue to hear uh, all the wonderful voices uh, here at Trinity United Methodist. So uh, yesterday at the UMW Valentine's Day uh, observance, uh, George Cook uh, sang for us. So I just, I just uh, holding my, well, maybe not holding my breath, but so eager for the day when everyone is, is singing together. Um, it was uh, been a delight for us to learn of the uh, tradition here at Trinity United Methodist that on Valentine's Day or the Sunday closest, that there's an opportunity for renewal of marriage vows. And so this year we decided to open it up to uh, everybody uh, present, whether you're worshiping with us in person or online or even recorded uh, at, an, at another time. So uh, at the appropriate time, we'll just ask those that choose to participate to, to, to stand uh, where they are rather than to come forward. So our confident faith is that God is love and God chooses to express this steadfast love in covenant relationship with all peoples. The sacrament of Christian marriage is one expression of this sacred covenant. And Jesus gave us the example of the love between wife and husband. So for those among us who desire to renew their very marriage vows, we acknowledge their sacrifices and their joys that have been and those that lie ahead. And for those present, uh, we would invite you to please stand where you are and face one another and hold hands. For those at home, you can face one another and hold hands. And for the rest of us, we ask you just to please reach out a hand of blessing towards these couples. So husbands, would you please repeat after me I state your name, continue to give myself to you as your husband from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. This remains my solemn vow. So wives, please repeat after me. I state your name, continue to give myself to you as your wife from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. This remains my solemn vow. Let's all of us bow our heads as we pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways these couples graciously witness to your living presence in their married lives. And we ask that you continue to bless them in the coming seasons. We give you thanks that your blessings give life one day at a time to their marriages. And we are grateful for all the ways they witness to your love in the life of our community. They are such a blessing to us. And finally, by your grace, bring each of them and all of us into your heavenly home. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. So our special gospel song is, uh, I'm grateful, uh, it's actually, it was a special request of mine, so uh, fill my cup, Lord. Amen. Thank you. That uh, was our way of offering a toast to, to all of you that renewed your marriage vows this morning. Our scripture, uh, we have two scriptures this morning, and the first one is actually just one verse, so uh, I'd like to in, ask your help for all of you uh, to give the response. If you could just say after me, I'll give it to you one phrase at a time. God is love. God is love. Those, who Those who abide in love abide in God, God. and God abides, God abides in them. Thank you. This is the last Sunday of Epiphany. And right before Pastor Lisa went on renewal leave, she described epiphanies as aha moments. And I like that. And I've loved learning about this tradition of renewal of wedding vows. And I had to think a bit about how to preach this morning. Uh, for one thing, I am in no position to offer marital advice to anyone. Uh, Last year, uh, Christine and I celebrated our 15th anniversary. Prior to our marriage, Christine had never been married before. I, on the other hand, have experienced both divorce and being widowed. But we both share a sensitivity to friendship with others, regardless of their current marital status. And if I have learned anything at all about marriage, it's that I've got a lot to learn. I do believe, though, it's really healthy and wonderful for us as a church 
to rejoice with those who celebrate. And I am thankful to the men who responded to my calling all husbands invitation to tell about their, how, what they remember about how they first met their wife. So we've, I've got four of these to share. Bob Carr wrote, I was working nights while attending Wittenberg University as a sophomore. After work, my friend and I decided to crash the school's freshman mixer. Upon arrival, I immediately spotted a lovely blonde in a bright orange dress. I asked her to dance and ultimately we spent the rest of the evening walking the campus, talking and getting to know each other. After taking her back to her dorm, I went to my fraternity house, somehow just knowing that she was the one. I gave her my fraternity pin two weeks later. We've been together ever since, and last August, we celebrated 50 years of marriage. Trent Rader wrote, I met Pam at the tail end of high school. We both worked part-time at a local nursing home and shared a mutual friend. At the urging of this friend, Pam asked me to her prom and then I asked her for a first date. Our love has lasted the 38 years since. As everyone knows, Pam is a naturally beautiful, kind, and loving person. I guess I just had the good fortune or perhaps God's blessings early in life. It's nice when those two go together. Carol Hatfield wrote, Lisa and I went to high school together. However, one summer before high school, we met at church camp. We attended two different churches of the same denomination, so while dating in high school, we went to both on Sunday mornings. That was over 54 years ago. Happy Valentine's Day. Jerry Voiles shared this memory. Joy and I attended high school together in Indianapolis. Our graduation class was just 95. Joy enrolled a year or two after me, having attended a different grade school. In any case, she was the most beautiful girl in school. It was rumored that she was smart, too. We dated a little and went to the senior prom together. We dated over the next four years while I was a student at Purdue and driving every weekend between West Lafayette and Indianapolis. We married June the 1st, 1961, and went to graduation the next day. I can still picture her walking down the halls with a stack of books in her arms. She is still beautiful and smart and has managed to put up with me for 60 years. I'm just so grateful to Bob, Trent, Carol, and Jerry for sharing their significant aha moments, sharing moments like that. It, they just bring joy for all of us. So today is a time for celebration. One way we celebrate is in song, and that's why our musical leadership here at Trinity is just so very, very precious to us, especially in these days. So this morning, I want to tell you about two songs, songs that help us express the many dimension of our life of faith in Christ. And you just heard the first song, Fill My Cup, Lord. You may not know that this hymn was written by a United Methodist pastor right here in the Florida Conference by the name of Richard Blanchard. 
back in the 1980s while he was serving his last appointment up at Conway Methodist Church in Orlando, I heard him talk about writing this song. When he wrote this song, he was serving as pastor down in Coral Gables, Florida at Wesley Methodist Church. And he talks about one afternoon, he had a premarital counseling session scheduled, but the couple had not shown up. He was getting annoyed. And he told his secretary he'd give him 30 minutes before he went home. He was, happened to be a musician. So he went down to the fellowship hall to play the piano. He said he had a lot on his mind then. Several months prior, his son had had a very tragic accident and it was becoming clear that he was going to be a quadriplegic the rest of his life, requiring much care. The medical expenses were piling up and he wasn't sure what he was going to do and he was just feeling very burdened. Heavy burdens, daily annoyances, these are all part of a life of faith. No relationship and no marriage is immune from them. As he sat at the keyboard of that piano in the fellowship hall, this song just came. The words and the, and the tune for this hymn were completed according to Dick Blanchard in less than 30 minutes, a real gift of the Holy Spirit. A couple weeks ago, I encouraged you to spend some time meditating on the cross. That's the focal point of our sanctuary here at Trinity. And I was doing just that a couple weeks ago when this song, Fill My Cup, Lord, uh, came to my mind. Because I saw not just the cross, but I saw the clear lines of a chalice. Can you see it there? It's underneath the cross. It's quite large, goes from, from end to end. I saw it as a cup of blessing to celebrate and give thanks to God as we have this morning for the blessing of those who faithfully live within the covenant of marriage I also saw it as a cup of blessing as that Jesus offered to the woman at the well in the song. She was the woman who had had a complicated life. Yet Jesus promises her, those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. I saw it as a cup of blessing for all of us who are thirsty for the grace of God to be real in our lives. It seemed to me it was a very large cup with a large capacity, but it's also, I also saw it as being quite fragile. The thinness of, the, of this chalice seemed to illustrate to me that our lives are not indestructible. Cups and chalices are subject to being spilled, tipped over, cracked, broken, they ask to be valued and cared for. Marriages are no exception to this. I was trying to think of specific examples in our marriage of spilling or dropping things. I decided to not use any personal examples, uh, but I'll just say that Christine has a full-time job cleaning up after me. Um, I was trying to think of other examples of spills happening, you know, like in restaurants or stores, and, and I know have, there have been many, but funny that none specifically came to my mind. But the overall impression that I have is the spontaneous instinct of everyone present to pitch in and do whatever it takes to clean it up. That is who we are at our best. Not worrying about who to blame or who to shame, but doing whatever it takes 
to clean up what is spilled, to repair what is cracked, to do what it takes to heal and make whole. The second song I want to tell you about is perhaps the oldest hymn we have from the early church. All we have is the lyrics. Paul includes this ancient hymn in his letter to the Philippians. Paul is writing to a church that he loves, and it seems that it's going through some stuff. We don't know what the stuff is, and there's been a lot of conjectures, but we don't actually really need to know what it is. But one thing I found interesting is how Paul begins this passage. He says, if then there is any encouragement in Christ. So let me entertain you with a brief Greek grammar lesson. I know you're just waiting for this. If then phrases introduce conditional clauses. And there's actually in Greek two different kinds of these clauses that are contained within the verb form. One kind is the negative conditional clause. For example, if I were Superman, and I'm obviously not, you get the idea. The other kind is the positive conditional clause. For example, if I were your friend, and I am. This passage this kind of clause begins, or this from the scripture, begins with a series of positive conditional phrases. So as we hear this passage, it's important to understand that when Paul says, if then there is any encouragement in Christ, what he means is, and there is. Paul is appealing to what my preaching professor referred to as the most unused resource in the church, who the members are and what they already know. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to help me emphasize this by all of you saying, and there is, when I indicate it's time. So I will say, if then there is any encouragement in Christ and you respond, ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant. So there's, there's four of these. We'll just let the passage speak for itself. Here then is a passage, it's from the first 15 verses of the second chapter of Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any sharing of the Spirit, if then there is any compassion and sympathy, Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind and of the same love. Be of one accord and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each one of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind, and this is where the, the, the lyrics to the hymn begin. Let the same mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking 
the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. And being found in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore then, God has highly exalted him so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, according to God the Father. And will all of God's children say, Amen. Before our final hymn, uh, I would like to give you uh, two very important reminders. One, uh, this Wednesday begins the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday services here at Trinity. Uh, you will be delighted, as I am delighted, that Pastor Lisa will be leading both the services. They will be held at 8 a.m. and at 12.30 p.m. Both of them will be outside in the Garden of Hope and they will also be on Facebook Live. So we encourage you to join together in this invitation to Lenten discipline. And the second reminder is that this Saturday is uh, our monthly Fill the Table event from 9 until 10.30. So we're very grateful for your enthusiastic contributions. Our final hymn this morning, uh, I love the choice of his Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Uh, traditionally, Pastor Lisa always, the Wednesday morning meditations, she always closes uh, with that hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. So let's stand together as we are led in song. Amen. Amen. For our blessing, I once again want to invite you to look at somebody else here in the congregation. Look at somebody else. Maintain eye contact. For those that, at home, if, if you're uh, with somebody else, look at them. I'll give you the blessing. If you're worshiping by yourself, I'm going to do my best to look at you. 
Would you share this blessing? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. And will all of God's children say, Amen. Amen.